Hey, Charlie. So, uh, the madness at Defense Soap, um, I don't know if it uh, is going to stop anytime soon, but what's the last 14 days been like for you guys at Defense Soap? It's been just, I mean, probably the busiest in company history by, by a long shot. Um, you know, obviously moving a ton of product, uh, you know, our disinfecting tablets made that EPA list of approved products effective against COVID-19. Um, so obviously that news kind of hit us in a really good way, but, you know, as far as, you know, our staff and stuff trying to keep people, um, safe, you know, it, it's, it's been a lot, uh, in a really good way. Um, so really unique opportunity that, you know, we're just in the kind of the right place at the right time with our industry, you know, super sad and unfortunate some of these businesses being affected. Um, and as far as, you know, us just kind of having that corporate responsibility to make sure that, you know, we're getting people, uh, products that are going to keep them safe and just kind of, you know, you, you know, make uh, peace of mind, giving people that, you know, our disinfectant tablets, we're limiting those to one per customer just to make sure that, you know, we don't have the hoarding and all that going on. Um, and just having, like I said, having that responsibility to the community and, you know, to our customers. You know, when I look at that whole situation that we're talking about, if you want to say, if you want to say hi to him, you can say hi to him real quick. Okay. But the whole thing is, um, we got another guy coming in to say hi to you again. Um, the whole thing with the hoarding kind of blows my mind. And I asked you earlier today, I'm like, do you guys even have inventory? And then you told me about some yeah. of the measures you actually had to take because your tablets yeah. did make the, they made the EPA list of things that kill no COVID-19. So obviously the, the demand, you know, and this is, this right. is capitalism, right? The demand goes yeah. through the roof, right? Yeah. Demand, demand is incredibly high. Um, and obviously, you know, obviously our supply chain, um, we're going to have some kinks in that uh, in the next couple of weeks coming up um, with all kind of the, the panic buying going on. But, you know, we could have really easily sold out of just about everything. Um, but, you know, like I said, limiting quantities to make sure that everyone has, you know, their fair share and they're able to keep themselves safe. And like I said, the peace of mind, I think, is huge um, that people are, are uh, kind of changing the way they approach hygiene, the way they approach their you know safety and you know, disinfecting needs and all those things, especially with, you know, schools, organizations, companies, things like that. Uh, you know, Mike Matten, I had Dr. Mike Matten on, and, you know, he's obviously a huge fan of the product. But he also told me, he's like, even if you don't have the bleach wipes, right? Clorox has a bleach wipe. And it, there was there was Guy, real quick. Guy just made a cameo, by the way. But he was like, Zeb, even if you don't have Clorox bleach wipes, right? He said, yeah. the defense soap wipes are good to wipe surfaces down. He's yeah. like, it's better yeah. than not having anything. And so what did I start doing? I started wiping all the, he said, doorknobs. He said, because we couldn't get, we couldn't get the, the Clorox wipes, obviously, because of the panic buying and the hoarding. Right. Um, but I was wiping everything down with the fence. And then when we were, we were uh, doing our, our uh, hikes afterwards, they'd get all, my kids would get all gnarly. I was wiping down, they were wiping down. Um, yeah. Obviously, they'd get their, their shoes and their pants would be destroyed. And rather than taking all the bacteria from the streams and the creeks and the rivers and everything they were in and the mud puddles, I'd wipe them down with that. So it's like essential to wipe everything down like frequently. Yeah. And like you said, it's unfortunate, but how do you think you guys have handled it? It's kind of almost a windfall for you, but really unfortunate for other small businesses. How have you handled this and how have you kept up? Uh, well, I mean, like I said, I mean, obviously business, you know, is good um, as far as the amount of order coming and all that. The biggest thing, I think this is like a really unique opportunity for, for our business, um, not from a you know monetary standpoint, but just providing education. You know what I mean? Everyone is super concerned right now with their hygiene, washing their hands. I mean, a lot of this stuff may seem like overkill, but it's like practicing good hygiene is, is just a good defense, no pun intended, against um, a lot of the you know, infections, the sickness, the flus. Um, so, you, you know, from a business standpoint, yeah, it's good. But from an education standpoint, I think people kind of, um, it's usually one of those things that's, it's not a problem until it's a problem. Um, and right now it's a big problem. Um, so I think people, you know, implementing things that will, um, kind of keep them safer and keep their, their businesses, their schools, their organizations a little, um, a little safer, not just, not just now, but in the future, I think, um, you know, we're going to be able to, to keep people, uh, you know, healthier, cleaner, safer. Um, so not just now, but I think in the future too, I think people, for the first time in a long time, kind of have their ears open to, all right, what do I need to do? Um, a lot more receptive to what's going on. So, you know, obviously we have an obligation to provide products, but a huge component of our business 
is are those content pieces, that education, telling people what they should be doing. And obviously, you know, we're not, uh, you know, the authority on a lot of these things. We're, we're getting a lot of the advice from, you know, our, our, our manufacturers, from chemical companies. So we're doing our best to, to get that information out there to keep people safe and make sure that they're doing everything they can to, you know, uh, keep them, you know, healthy. So if you've ever seen the movie Jaws, uh, we're going to need a bigger boat. We're going to need a bigger boat. You're going to need a bigger boat. boat. Like you just got into this new facility in the last three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and and a and hundred Jaws just fell into your lap, right? I mean, yeah. It didn't fall in your lap. You you know, a guy earned his way there. You know, there's no question about that. But oh, yeah. you're in this yeah. gritty factory, and I told you you're not as tough anymore because. But now you're in this new facility, and you might outgrow the new facility in six months. I I hope so. Um, that'd be a good thing. That's that's something we'll have to figure out. Um, but you, you know, I I think this is really unique opportunity to get our foot in the door with a lot of places that we probably otherwise wouldn't have. You know, we talked earlier. Um, I was on the phone with an executive at Ford the other day, um, Coca-Cola Regional called, um, and, and they're all just kind of frantic as far as what we need to do. So it's kind of cut through a lot of the red tape. You know, again, it's a really fortunate thing from a business standpoint, but I think um, just providing, uh, you know, some comfort to these these organizations that obviously have a lot of pressure from, you know, from corporate, from their customers, um, from a business standpoint, I, I think, you know, we have a responsibility to them to put their customers' minds at ease, put their employees to workplaces, and just creating safe environments for everyone, you know, to the best of our ability. Um, so you're obviously a genius. You graduated from Cornell. I like to run the other one. But um, I guess you can't run the forklift because the credits didn't transfer over. There was no – they didn't yeah. jive or whatever. But um, being, you know, a guy, you know, an Ivy League grad, um, this thing is, it's for real. It is for real. And I don't think a lot of people, obviously New York City, one of your rival schools, Columbia is in New York City. They, New York City did not take it seriously. I know. And I think that's the problem is like, regardless of where you stand on it, I think taking a lot of precautionary measures, you know, a lot of people are like, ah, oh, I'm young. It's not going to affect me. I'm like, yeah, parents, you got grandparents. Um, so I, I think the biggest way to look at it, even if you're, you know, kind of, uh, a skeptic about it would be, you know, the cost of doing all this stuff, um, you know, from a health standpoint, I just don't really see the cost of not doing it. I mean, we could see what happens really quickly. Um, so I think just taking it a little more seriously, I think it's starting to scare people more and more, um, which, you know, it, it causes the panic. It causes the, the toilet paper shortages and all that. By the way, we sell wipes. Um, so. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Uh, Do you want to know in this whole thing when they had the all, people made the run on the the toilet paper? You guys just gave me like two cases of wipes, and I haven't had a chance to give any of them away yet. And I was because yeah. everything got canceled, right? And I'm like, yeah. uh, we're we're actually good because we got yes. a bunch of wipes. We're we're good. Yeah. Seriously, we're good. We're good. I, I told you it saved me this summer at Rocky Mountain National Park. I think I told you the story out on the trail. It, it saved me. It was a pretty ugly situation. But, um, yeah, man, like, you guys sell wipes. That's the other thing. You guys, you're yeah. not, like, do you remember you guys ran out of wipes about 14 months ago? Do you remember that? Yeah, it was brutal. Now you're not in that situation. Now you got the pallets. You got you have a wipe guy who makes wipes eight hours a day, five, six days a week. Yeah, I mean, the demand for those has always been really high. That's probably always, obviously, our bar soaps and our gels, we, we move a ton of those. But wipes is just a you know not even from from our company, but just as a as a kind of as a product category. Um, body wipes, you know, guy was talking about today. He's like 15 years ago, you know, body wipes weren't all that like ubiquitous, and now you see them just about everywhere. Um, you know, dude wipes and all these other companies coming out with things. Uh, so I think that product category has just grown a ton, um, and the demand for that is just like really skyrocketed. And right now, obviously. With the shortage out, you know, just about everything is, is becoming in short supply. I know that you you and Dan put in like 80 plus hours last week. And I know that Guy really grinds, right? Yeah. Guy's outworked you guys, I bet you. Guy isn't at home with his kids. Guy is there working. He probably put 90 hours in if you guys put 80 hours in. I mean, it's 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 kind of all hands on. The, the last couple of weeks has just been like everyone just kind of keep your you know nose to the grindstone and just find a way through it as a team. Um, luckily, we have just an awesome team of, of people that care a lot about um, the business we're in. They care a lot about wrestling. 
Um, so, I mean, we're super fortunate. You know, obviously, I have a leader like Guy that, that's willing to put in that time um, and kind of lead from the front. Uh, I think it just says a lot about his character, um, his ability to manage a business, his ability to be a head coach of a program like West Shore, the feeder program in the same as. I mean, he just, we're checking off so many boxes as far as, you know, things that you want to follow um, and people you want to be around. So, I, what are you, 33 or 34? How old are you, Charlie? 35. Thanks for bringing it up. Come on, man. I'm 40. So, uh, in your lifetime, you know, you've been so dedicated. You went, you obviously went to the St. Ed's, St. Ed's program where you were three time state placer for them. Um, you know, Greg Irvis teaches you guys so much about like dedication, doing the right thing all the time. But wrestling's never taken a back seat in your life to anything until now. Wrestling, this is the first time in your life, would you say, Charlie, that wrestling or coaching or the sport yeah. has taken a back seat in your life ever? Yeah, I mean, it's been such a big part of my life for so long. Um, yeah, I mean, we kind of had our season cut short from the high school level all the way to the, you know, the kindergartners, um, and work just, you know, skyrocketed to the top of that list because, you know, number one, the demand, and number two, just like I said, that that responsibility to, you know, serve our, our customers, our community, um, and then taking on a lot of new, you know, different opportunities that kind of presented themselves to us. So, you know, it's like I said, it's been all hands on deck. We're finally settled in here. So you know, had coffee this morning with Guy and Dan, sat down. It was awesome. We got to hear yesterday at like 530 after a really intense badminton game. So it's like starting to get back to normal um, <laughs> as far as day to day. But it was pretty touch and go there for a while. How right now you don't your drive. There's no traffic on your drive. But now you've got this drive introduced into your life that you didn't have for the last couple of years. Yeah, so it was two miles before. And now we're looking at like 35. But to be honest. Listen to my podcast, cup of coffee, no traffic. It's kind of been nice. Um, Dan and I were talking this morning. I'm like, this drive is actually kind of relaxing. Um, so making the best of the situation. You know, obviously, no one wants to make their commute like 20 times longer. Um, but I, you know, obviously find the silver lining just a little more time to myself, which you know I don't get a ton of it during wrestling season, especially. Um, so it's it's been nice. All right, can you can you do can you just give me a little tip down? Can I just okay. Can you tell me how did how did your grandpa? What is his? What's the deal with Chief Wahoo? Tell, just tell me. I don't even know the story. So I, I think I don't know what exact like I don't know what iteration he did. He claims he did this, but sometimes I find some inconsistencies with the story. So, um, but no, he was. I mean, he was the art director of the Plain Dealer for Who, years. Who's your grandpa? Who's your grandpa? Tell everybody. Not everybody knows your grandpa. Vince Matucci. That's your mom. Um, that's your mom's. <laughs> Dad? My mom, yeah, correct. Mom's dead. Okay, so um, Vince Matucci. So obviously, he's been a huge part of my life from a wrestling standpoint, and then just as a grandpa, he's just an awesome guy. Um, is he? Is he yeah, good right he, now? Is he okay right now? Yeah, he's he's hanging in there. Obviously, I can't really see him, you know, with everything. Yeah. Um, he's been with my mom now, and my mom's taking awesome care of him. Um, he's he's good. I mean, no no major health problems. Just you know, at his age, he's a little more care at this point in his life, um, as you would expect. Was Vince a, a state champ? He was part of the 1951 West High State Championship team with six state champs. Um, That's the greatest team ever. Until like, until like some of these like Graham teams and at, and we're talking in that well, era. My grandpa's already, my grandpa's already before this is I think Graham had seven. Yeah. Out of 14 weight classes, which is half the weight classes, and my grandpa said they had six, and there was only 10 weight classes then, so 60 <laughs> percent. He's right. He's, dying. he's so. right. And if you look at the Genoa team, Genoa had six champs last year. How many times have you guys had six champs, uh, Eds? Never. I don't think we ever have. Are you serious? Dead serious. Yeah. I, I, I think remember. the most we had, I know the 2000 team had five because it was Lang, Bertine, Leonard, Jane, and Zach Schweda. And I think Moe's was second then. I mean, we've had like seven or eight finals before, but we've never had more than five champs. Wow. I, I didn't realize that. And then, like, Genoa last year, and then Graham's done the seven. Um but yeah, like you're saying, he was in a different era. And then was he one of the six state champs? He's one of the six. And the story he always tells is that Pepe Rocco, I think, took he had blown out his ACL the week before. And everyone on that team, that you know, all the old timers, like Pepe was by far the best. Who you know, God rest his soul, he just passed recently. Um, but you know, that team. And on top of the two, my grandpa, you know, affectionately says, you know, we grew up on the same two blocks. Like their kindergarten picture. I think there's five of the state champs there. He's like. You know, all these other teams got kids from all over the state and all over the country. He's like, we grew up on the same two blocks, just, you know, the old Italian neighborhood that, you know, super tough guys, blue collar. Pepe um, Rocco was Italian? 
Puppy Rock. That doesn't sound like an Italian yeah, name. I know. I know. <laughs> Charlie Agazzino, that doesn't sound, those don't sound like, Vince Matucci, those aren't very Italian names. What are you talking no, about? And then obviously Dick Bonacci. Dick Bonacci, not very Shore. Italian at all. These, these are like the least so Italian think, names ever. Dick, Dick wasn't a part of that team. I think he was, had just graduated the year before. But, you know, Coach Bonacci obviously has just been a huge uh, influence in Guy's life. Um, he actually coached with us at West Shore, and he's 86. He still gets on the mat and shows moves. It's I'm not kidding either. It's it's awesome. Um Having him around is, is special. Is, really is, is Cleveland State only had like four head coaches, right? It's been like Dick Bonacci, I mean, he was there Efner, for thirty years. Yeah, Dick Bonacci, Efner, and then uh, Stahura and Josh Moore. I think no, Moore. Still, I, I think and about, Josh was doing just an awesome job. Josh is killing um, him, dude. Uh, and I'm I'm actually, like a lot closer with Josh since working at defense. Uh, even like having like Flynn around, some muster. Um, you know, I always tell him, even though he wrestled for for Walsh, it was something that I always looked up to. Just so tough, um, and seeing him back in the area helping out Cleveland guys, it, it's really cool to see. I've got to you know speak with him a lot this year, and just picking his brain on coaching and, and technique and all that stuff. So him and his, you know he's someone that I really idolized growing up. I've told him this many times, um, and then having like Dave Riggs around, guys like that. I mean, I'm I'm literally coaching with the guys that I've, I've kind of idolized. Um, so it's it's been a treat to say the least between Bonacci. Get more time with you know the Cleveland State coaching staff. Getting a coach with Dave Riggs with his uh, grandkids. It's been it's been you know special. It really has been. So none of us know what the next basically two months holds, uh, Charlie. What do you think the next two months holds for for you guys at Defense Oak? Um, you, you know I think we're you know we've we're on the phone daily with our suppliers right now um, to make sure that we're able to get things in stock to make sure that we're providing stuff. Um, we'll probably continue to limit quantities on certain things. You know, it's not, a, like I said, you know, as, as good as business is, it's not just about money. Um, it's it's providing things to, to the community at large. You know, I've been working a lot with the, the local community here, Vermillion. I was on the phone yesterday with the library. Um, you, know, you know, I think everyone's just trying to navigate a really different time and way of life. Um, it, it's scary. It's challenging. But I think, like, seeing everyone come together, spending more time with family, you know, valuing relationships, putting things in perspective, um, and I think even in the toughest times, I think knowing how to show gratitude for things that are important to you is just, you know, that's what successful people do. Um, so, you know, you could cry and bitch and moan about it, but I think kind of taking the high road and, and, and taking it as an opportunity for whatever um, it may be in your life, uh, I think is, is something that, you know, like I said, successful people do. Speaking of gratitude and being thankful, um, I have next to me my box. Remember, remember, I was like, hey, I need a personal box. Because you guys yeah. give me stuff to give out. We remember we, we switched out a bunch of oatmeal bars with for the new design, um, and then so you gave me three boxes of oatmeal. That was what I was going to give away at NCAs, and then you gave me obviously these samples. These are yeah. my favorite. This is the easiest. The sample is just, dude. This is just like where it's at. If you're, there you go. There you go. There you go. So anyhow, like this is just so easy for someone like me to give away and have in my pocket. You know, I'm always packing, right? I'm always like. Yeah. Guys, like, do you always have one in your pocket? And you already know the answer to that. Quick but, one. but the box of things that I got and gratitude. It's the best. It's a gallon. It's a gallon. Hold on. Hold on. And if you want to talk seriously, this, this right here, that's the lifesaver right there. I got a couple of these. And then, of course, refills. Dude, this is what we're you, washing so our hands, hands with right now. This is what we're using 20 times a day, each of us. That's such a – that hand soap, I – Dude, it's I amazing. It. It's, it's always been one of my favorite products. We've sold, sold probably more hand soap in the last month than maybe in the previous five years combined. That um, foaming – the foaming peppermint is amazing. So good. It's I like, have it in every bathroom in my house, so. Yeah, if I go in right now, there's no gimmick. Well, my Actually, my wife has a uh, – uh, a roadblock set up so that pe certain people can't get in this room right now. Or, right. <laughs> or I'd walk in there and show you. But it's wild because I have so much of it and I use it. I use it on a daily basis. And then, like I said, I haven't been able to give any wipes away yet. And right. think about that. Think about the giveaway in the next two months when I start giving stuff away to people and promoting the product. Like, Think about how thankful they're really going to be at this point. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, that, I mean, that more... This time, I think, is after this kind of dies down, I think people will just be a little more cognizant of, um, 
personal care, hygiene, um, and then just like, you know, keeping their places, you know, their houses more clean, their kitchen counters and, and being a little more cognizant of, you know, some of the, the things that can harm you out there. Okay. So I got some custom stuff made here too by Barbarian. Did you see this yet? Did you see this yet? What does it, what does it say? Ohio rest. That's pretty sweet. Ooh, defense on the bottom. New logo. I like it. We got new stickers too. So you yeah. got a, uh, next time you're back, we got to yeah. get some stuff out. I'm in. I see guy just popped in there. So he might have uh, stuff for you to do. Oh, there's that one. All right. Nice. See those? Yeah, I, I love the. The new rollout's been been awesome. The you know the feedback. Obviously, we pulled our customers. You know, we reached out to I think like fifteen hundred people. Um, we had a couple different concepts, and this one was overwhelmingly the favorite. But I think it turned out great. You know, as more and more SKUs are coming out, um, I just I like it. It just you know gives us a oh you mean this? You know, puts this us one? in a lot of places I don't think we could have been before. That guy. Him? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, 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 yeah. Hey. Okay. I know that you probably got stuff going on. I don't want to cut you short. Do you got anything else for me? No, the family of Bill. All right, buddy. Uh, thank you for the time. As soon as I can, I'm going to get out there. Um, yeah. And if we end up going into this podcast format moving forward, you're obviously going to be one of our first guests, you guy. And we'll be able to do it remotely. So I think that this is going to be something that could be a hit. Awesome. And uh, I've been getting a lot of good feedback. but um. All right, man. Thank you for the time. Stick around. Uh, defend what you've built, Charlie. Thanks for the time, and stick around, all right? All right. Thanks, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.